our main job is working with landowners who have resource related, particularly soil and water problems on their land. We go meet with them, look at the problem, and then from the different kind of practices, conservation practices we have, we make suggestions, recommendations, and then they choose which one will work best for their operation. We first came out here would have been uh, probably like 1982. Um, Bob had purchased the original acres. I, I want to think it's 15 acres or something like this. There's a little place in the country for them. And the first thing that I worked with him on was actually the pond that's kind of behind us here. And then over time, um, you know, Bob was interested in trying to do, you know, have it for fishing and that. So gave him information of some of the fish hatcheries where he could um, get some stock to put in there, which he has done. And then just over the time of main, maintaining the pond, things like that, like uh, if you look at the pond now, you see it's all grass, which that's the way we like to see it and recommend it. Then as he expanded his operation and started getting into more of a farming business, uh, some of the land just a little bit over that way, I think was a, the next purchase that he had. And that had been previously cropland and he wanted to do cattle and things like that. So we worked with him on converting that cropland to permanent uh, pasture. We had one of our specialists come down, a grazing specialist that works in particularly what we call plant grazing. Went over the farm, uh, have different recommendations on things that Bob could do to uh, better utilize those forages. And then as Bob expanded his operation, uh, I forgot what the toll acres are, but it was cut over timberland. So he was going from that cut over land now wanting to develop it into grass. And we work giving the recommendation and clearing the land, the CD mixes getting that initial resource change to the grasses he has. After he got the grass established, then obviously, unless he wants to be a cowboy, he has to put up a perimeter fence. So now he has to do all that work. Once that perimeter fence was up, then that's where we worked a little bit more closely together is how it could be utilized most efficiently in a grazing system. How does it be broken up? In his case there, he created a, cent a central uh, lane, an alleyway, and so all the pastures kind of uh, come off that center lane. Then as we put the water system in, we were able to again follow the fence lines so each of the pastures have access to water. That's an important factor of the grazing system. Deer Track Farm was recently recognized for their conservation efforts. This is done through a program through the Department of Conservation and Recreation, which is actually handled through the local conservation district. In this case, it's Tri-County City Soil Water Conservation District. He did receive the plaque that was awarded to him at the Board of Supervisors. Uh, the district arranged uh, at one of their meetings to do the public recognition for Bob and, and his work here. And then they are given that sign that you see on the side of the barn to post hopefully somewhere prominently where people can see that they have been uh, selected as someone who's a good example of conservation. From his pasture management, why he was selected is, uh, first of all, um, excluding the animals from protecting the surface waters by excluding them from surface waters, uh, developing this pasture system. If you find any erosion here, it's just incidental where it might be a little cow path, but it's basically that he has done everything he can do to keep his soil in place on the fields, and by doing that is kept those waters clean. So that that's where that sign comes from. He's transformed what was open crop land into you know land that now has a good solid conservation cover on it and is being well managed from like I said before the conservation standpoint, but also from his standpoint of making a living off this property and, and using some of the different conservation techniques in along with all the other types of things that he, his breeding program, the other things that are part of a farming system. As you come into this farm now, you have to come through a subdivision. That subdivision was part of the original farm that uh, Bob had bought and stuff like this. So 
it's in a sense it's right in his backyard and he wanted to protect what he's done his life's work here and through our agency we had what's called the grassland protection um, program where we could enter into an easement with a, a farmer in this case that it has to have grassland whether it be for hay pasture whatever but it had to be grassland so this farm will remain in grass because that's part of the thing. Um, our easement, it has to be in grass. It can't grow up into trees. It's not going to grow up into houses. That's Bob's dream. What you see here is what is going to be passed on for this generation and future generations.